As a dermatologist and mom of two, I know exactly how confusing skincare can feel during pregnancy and breastfeeding. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Alexandra Brown. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I have been practicing dermatology for 15 years and I have two children, so I have been in your shoes. If you're somebody who's pregnant or breastfeeding and you're struggling with acne, pigmentation, uneven texture, and wondering what ingredients are safe, I've been there, I'm here to help you. Today I want to walk you through what skincare is safe to use, what's better to pause on, and how to keep your skin healthy whether you're pregnant, postpartum, or breastfeeding. This is not medical advice, this is just general education, not replacement for your medical care. So if you have a particular product or ingredient that you're curious about or you're wondering about its safety, make sure you take the label to your OB and make the decision that's specific to you. Let's get into it. So what happens to your skin during pregnancy? Hormonal shifts in pregnancy can make skin more oily, can make it drier for some, definitely more reactive, and everyone is pretty much prone to acne and melasma. But the good news is that you can still have a simple, effective routine using ingredients that are generally considered acceptable during pregnancy while you're protecting your skin barrier and your peace of mind. So let's go through the ingredients that you probably actually really should avoid during pregnancy. Let's start with what you should pause and why so that you can understand what we're actually replacing. The first ingredient I wanna discuss is a retinoid. So if you're using anything like tretinoin, different or generic for that is adapalene or tazerac or tazeratine or anything that says retinol on the label, you're gonna to wanna to pause this. The reason for this is that Oral forms of vitamin A like Accutane are known teratogens that can cause serious birth defects. And while topical retinoids, also vitamin A, can be absorbed but in way less than oral doses, we just don't really have enough safety studies on pregnant women to say that they're 100% safe. So out of an abundance of caution, dermatologists always recommend pausing all retinoids, everything in that retinol retinoid category while you're pregnant. Now, of note, breastfeeding, this is definitely not the case. Topical retinoids are in general safe because absorption is so minimal and the little that it does get into your system doesn't really transfer to the breast milk. And you will find that some derms will have different opinion probably on this, but in general, most of us are gonna say that retinoids are totally fine during breastfeeding. But let's say you wanna use retinol, but you can't, here are some swaps. So if you're using a retinoid for anti-aging texture, you can swap it with bakuchiol. This is a plant-derived ingredient that mimics the retinol's benefits without the irritation or pregnancy concerns. Studies do show that it can improve some of the fine lines and wrinkles and skin firmness in a way similar to retinol. It works by stimulating collagen production and has those antioxidant properties that can help protect your skin. A product recommendation here is the Inky List Bacuchiol Retinol Alternative Moisturizer. This is the two-in-one treatment and the moisturizer that can really simplify your routine right there. It's a lightweight cream texture, absorbs quickly. It's a plant-derived and with antioxidant properties. So this natural retinol alternative will help reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles and even skin tone. It's formulated with the omega-3 packed Sacha Inchi oil and squalene, and it also works to hydrate and nurture the skin. The key ingredients are the Bakuchiol 1%, the squalene, and Sacha Inchi oil, which nourishes the skin with omega-3s. Now, if you were using a retinoid to help with acne, texture, pigmentation, I've got just the ripe swap for you, and that is the azelaic acid. Azelaic acid is gonna be your new BFF during pregnancy. This is a naturally occurring acid that does triple duty. One, it kills acne-causing bacteria. Two, it will help exfoliate the dead skin cells. And three, it will help inhibit some of the melanin production. It also has some anti-inflammatory properties, so it's gonna work really well for rosacea in pregnancy skincare, but also for those melasma and pigmentation issues. Product recommendations here are things like Paul's Choice 10% Azelaic Acid Booster. This helps reduce redness and inflammation while brightening the skin. It's really lightweight gel texture that layers really well with other products. It does have a tiny bit of salicylic acid for that really mild exfoliation to unclog pores. The salicylic acid here is only at 0.5%. I don't see that as an issue. We'll talk about salicylic in a minute. And then the active ingredient here is the azelaic acid at 10%. Another recommendation for the products in this category is the ordinary azelaic acid. This one has 
no salicylic acid whatsoever. It's more of a suspension. It is also a very budget-friendly alternative that will help reduce that redness and even skin tone. It helps target rosacea bumps while also keeping the skin smooth. The key ingredients are azelaic acid and dimethicone. And if you like azelaic acid, but you want it higher than 10%, this is one of those ingredients that dermatologists often write as a prescription and 15%. It works really wonders and it's one of those safe options during pregnancy. Now I touched on sal acid a little bit. Salicylic acid is one of those things that I think a lot of derms are going to disagree on. I really think it depends. Are you using it in a wash form or a leave-on form? And then what percentage is it? So if you're using things like Paula's Choice BHA, which BHA is beta hydroxy acid or sal acid, or maybe using the ordinary sal acid or any other salicylic acid in a leave-on form greater than 2%, I would swap that out. If you have a cleanser that you're using for your acne that has salicylic acid that's really low percentage, I think that's probably fine since it's a wash off and the absorption rate is not very high. But the reason to stop the salicylic acid is because high dose salicylic acid isn't really recommended during pregnancy. The topical is absorbed much, much less. So again, we don't have enough safety data to say that it's safe in the leave on form. But if you had it in a cleanser, you're probably fine, especially if it's under 2%. Of note, salicylic acid is one of those ingredients that you don't want to use when you're pregnant, but when you're breastfeeding, it is totally safe. Since the absorption rate is so low and risk of it being excreted in a breast milk is extremely low, this would be one of those that is just like retinoids, totally safe to use when you're breastfeeding. But let's say you're somebody who's been using salicylic acid and you've been using it for your acne and you want to be pure about this and you want to stop it, I would recommend benzoyl peroxide wash. And benzoyl peroxide comes in different brands. For example, you have your Panoxyl, you have your CeraVe, um, and a bunch of other brands that come in like a low percentage, 4 to 5% or higher, 10%. Uh, 4 to 5% is going to work a lot better, especially for the face, especially for sensitive pregnancy skin. Benzoyl peroxide is an antibacterial agent. It helps kill that P acnes, which is uh, bacteria causing acne. And unlike salicylic acid, which unclogs the pores, benzoyl peroxide goes into those pores to minimize the amount of bacteria. So I love, love, love benzoyl peroxide for acne. It is safe for literally any phase of your life unless you're allergic to benzoyl peroxide. Therefore, it's safe during pregnancy and breastfeeding. My recommendation here would be either the Panoxyl or the CeraVe Acne Foaming Wash in the 4% because it tends to be a little bit more irritating. You can use it as a short contact mask, like 30 to 60 seconds, and then rinse it off. It does work better the longer you leave it on. If you have body acne, the 10% option might be a little bit better for you and will be just as safe. Now, let's say you were using your salicylic acid to get like a good texture and glow to your skin. You want to swap that out for lactic and glycolic. Unlike the sal acid, which is a BHA or beta hydroxy acid, your lactic and glycolic are AHA, so are alpha hydroxy acids. So they are not going to go deep into the pores. They tend to sit a little bit further on the surface. So the risk of absorption is extremely low. They break down the bonds between the dead skin cells, just like the sal acid. So they're going to help shed some of the skin cells really easy, revealing that brighter, smoother skin underneath. Between the two, lactic acid is going to be a little bit more hydrating and gentler, while glycolic acid is going to be a little bit spicier it can be a little bit more irritating so I would only recommend it for like more tolerant skin. If you're looking for lactic acid I absolutely love the Sunday Riley Good Jeans All-in-One Lactic Acid Treatment Face Serum. This one's really gentle it exfoliates while providing hydration it can help improve the appearance of dark spots, fine lines, wrinkles. It works really well for those with sensitive skin who need mild exfoliation. It comes not in a serum, it's more of a lotion, so you can totally apply like a hydrating serum underneath if your skin is extra sensitive. The key ingredients are the lactic acid and licorice extract. Now, if your skin is not too sensitive and you wanna spice it up just a wee bit, but still be pregnancy safe, this is where I would use the ordinary glycolic acid 7%. This is a little bit stronger than lactic acid, so it's better for more severe texture concerns. You can just put on a cotton pad after cleansing and use it maybe a couple of times a week. It is a, like a completely runny like essence and not so a lotion. So you really wanna apply it to clean, completely dry skin. It does contain aloe and ginseng that will help calm down and energize the skin. The key ingredients here are the 7% glycolic acid and Tasmanian pepperberry derivative, which will help reduce irritation that can be associated with the glycolic acid. And it also has the ginseng root and aloe vera to help further calm down any irritation you may develop. All right, let's talk about hydroquinone. If you've been using hydroquinone or bleaching agents, any prescription with hydroquinone, you're gonna need to pause this during pregnancy 
and during breastfeeding. Hydroquinone has really high skin absorption studies. It shows to be anywhere between 35 and 45% of it can get absorbed through your skin. So we don't, again, have any safety studies on pregnant women. So it is best to avoid this during pregnancy, also during breastfeeding. But the good news is that there are some alternatives or the counter that work pretty good and they're completely safe. So if you were using hydroquinone and you wanna swap it out, the first ingredient I will look for is the vitamin C serums. The vitamin C is a powerhouse antioxidant. It does multiple things. It can help brighten by interfering with melanin production, which are the pigment spots in the skin. It can protect your skin from free radical sun damage that's caused by UV rays and pollution. And it can also boost collagen production for that firmer skin. My recommendation in this category is definitely prequels Lucent C Vitamin C Serum 15%. It provides really potent brightening effects and antioxidant protection at a really affordable price. It is probably by now available at your local Target as well. It can help reduce dark spots, boost skin's natural radiance, and improve overall tone. It's suitable for daily use, most skin types. Now, some skin is sensitive to L-ascorbic acid, which is the active ingredient here, but most people are going to do just fine with it. The active ingredient, again, is the L-ascorbic acid or the vitamin C at 15%. It does have ferulic acid and a little bit of niacinamide in it. Now, niacinamide is another really cool ingredient. It's also called vitamin B3, and it is incredibly versatile. It helps inhibit some of the melanosome transfer, so basically it blocks pigment from spreading to the skin. It can help strengthen your skin's natural barrier by increasing ceramide production, but it can also help reduce inflammation, which is great for acne and redness, and regulate oil production. My favorite recommendation in this category would definitely be the La Roche-Posay Mela B3 Serum. This serum helps target dark spots, melasma, and post-acne marks while also being gentle enough for really sensitive skin. Niacinamide helps strengthen the barrier and calms irritation, making it suitable for daily use. This does have the patented melacil technology, which will help prevent new pigment from forming. It's suitable for daily use, even on the most sensitive skin. It also pairs really well with sunscreen in the morning and also your retinoids or your bagutiol at night. The key ingredients are the niacinamide 10%, the melacil, the hyaluronic acid, and of course, the La Roche-Posay Thermal Spring Water. Okay guys, that is all I have for you today. Now that you know what's safe to use, you can easily adjust your skincare routine without overhauling everything. If you want a full step-by-step -step routine breakdown, make sure you check out my video, Dermatologist Approved Safe Skincare Routine During Your Pregnancy. I'm gonna go ahead and link that below as well. It's one of my OG pregnancy videos that I recorded probably a couple years ago, but it is so, so good as to exactly how to do things. If this helped you understand your skin better, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, for more derm approved skincare tips. You can also find me on Instagram and TikTok at Dr. Alexandra Brown for more daily skincare tips. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.